This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. You know, I wasn't originally going to do another Abominations of Fan Fiction this early, because the last one only came out about two months ago, and I, I, I like to... I would have liked to wait around a while, find some truly bizarre stuff that I could read to you, but... I mean, I found this, and it's, you know, it's Christmas-themed, and I just... I might have to retire the show after this, because I just... I don't know if I'll ever top this. Okay, I might just stop reading fanfic after this, because... What, what's going to be better than this? Okay, what, what's going to make me just question the internet and humanity as a whole more than this? So... For those who don't know, let me introduce you to the world of Folgercest. So basically, about ten years ago, the coffee company Folgers, well, they insist on calling their product coffee, they, they released a commercial. It's a Christmas commercial. It's called Home for the Holidays. You can find it on YouTube. It's, all, it's actually a pretty popular one. It's all over the place. And... Well, there's really no delicate way to put this. It's only like 40 seconds long, and it... The, the two characters in it are a brother and sister, and it really looks like they're about to fuck each other. I brought you something from far away. <laughs> really? Oh. <laughs> what are you doing? You're my present this year. Like, it really just straight up looks like they're about to have sex at the end, and it's really weird. And the first time I saw it, I thought, I'm reading too much into this, but no, I'm not. Many other people thought the exact same thing. And it became so viral that now people have written fan fictions about it. Like, I went on Archive of Our Own, I found fan fictions for the Folgers Home for the Holidays commercial, and it's usually referred to as Folgercest. And I just... Just what... What else can I even say? What, what can I add? That, that will make this make more sense. Like, this is peak fanfiction, guys. This, this is peak fanfiction. There, there's nothing above this. Let's just... Oh, God. So this first one I found is called You're My Present. Uh, and most of these are pretty short, too. This is only 732 words. Summary. A quiet moment. And the real reunion. It's not even Christmas anymore. Their parents finally gave up the battle against the Sandman and headed upstairs, leaving them alone in the living room. She snuggled against him, head resting on his chest while he caught up on a year's worth of missed TV. He'd pulled one of the snowman's throws over them, necessary when she couldn't help running her fingers up and down the inside of his thigh. Wow, they're wasting no time. Oh yeah, also, in the commercial, they didn't have names. They just... She just refers to herself as sister at one point. <laughs> must have the wrong house. Sister? And not, not even in like the Pornhub sense where it's like stepsister. What are you doing, step bro? Like, no, it's just she calls herself a sister and so a lot of these don't actually give them names and a lot of the others give them, j j they just make up their own names. The credits rolled on the last episode of NCIS and they both stretched some of the stiffness out of their limbs. She changed back into his old baseball shirt, the cotton thin and stretched, so the neck hung over her bare shoulder, proving she'd also foregone a bra. He could just see the tips of her nipples peeking against the material. Okay, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna read much more than that, because it's basically just that they have sex. And, uh... Well, you get the idea. This next one is called Wrapping Paper, and it's only 981 words long. Summary. Jake comes home from West Africa. Megan waits to unwrap her present after dinner. And, uh... You know what? Actually, I'm, I'm not reading that one, because that one is basically the exact same thing, because it's just, it's, they just have sex, only this time they have names. And then there's one that's a little bit longer, it's only 1800 words long. It's called The Best Part of Waking Up. Summary. Some new traditions, some old ones, and a Christmas morning all to themselves. Yeah, spoiler alert, they, uh... They have sex in this one too, only in this one the brother is making muffins while it happens. And I'm only bringing this up because this line is in there. She sniffs the air. It mostly smells like sex now, although the Folgers and the oven are putting up a decent fight. 
and slides her hand into his. Do I smell mom's muffins? She asks, eyes crinkling as she smiles. She already knows the answer. Okay, so this one is actually pretty long. It's about 14,000 words, which... <sighs> Jesus Christ, guys. But, um, it's called Sinners, Saints, and Thieves. And I'm not going to read the whole thing, obviously. But this one is... interesting. The summary just says, When his sister was born, Josh didn't want her. Eventually, he changed his mind. And this one's a little different because it basically just goes through their entire childhood and their entire lives up until they're, like, in their 20s. And apparently the brother, Josh, is, like, dealing with these weird feelings he has for his sister and he feels weird about it. The, the one thing I'll say is that they don't actually have sex in this one, but it implies that they do at the end. But then in, in the notes it says... This story includes strong language, a passing reference to 9-11, several references to an intolerant type of evangelical Christianity, and non-explicit incest between consenting adults. This story is also very long. I'm not sure how that happened. And I, re I really mean it. Like, it goes through their whole childhood. It goes through, like, a car crash, and people getting sick, and relatives dying, and again 9-11, and just them having difficulty... How do you get that from a 40 second commercial? How do you... How do you look at this vaguely incestuous commercial, which apparently no one on the commercial intended for it to be that way, but... Uh, whatever. I'm not sure I believe that. Whatever. Just... How do you get all that from that? I don't understand... Whatever. So, the number one story on Archive of Our Own, under the Folger Cess tag, like the one with the most hits, is called A Home for All Seasons. Hi, Big Brother. So, you're usually home by this time, but I'll assume that you're out enjoying the wild Cameroon nightlife. And by that I mean the nightly Cameroon wildlife. Get it? Because you're in Africa. That summary is terrible. So, in this one they're named Libby and Matt. And, uh, fun fact, the actor that plays Matt is actually named Matthew Allen, and he plays an abusive stepfather on 13 Reasons Why. So... I don't know, I guess that just makes it a little bit funnier. So, this one is, um, it, it's, okay, it's pretty much the same as the last one. It doesn't go through their entire childhood, but, you know, this time they're named Libby and Matt, but it, it just goes through their young adulthood and how he went to Africa kind of to escape the feelings he had for his sister, you know, that sort of thing, and, um, god, I have a headache right now, and, but... Anyways, uh, they go through all that, and they continuously talk on the phone and stuff, and realize, hey, we're, we're actually in love, and they don't have sex in this one either. They do have phone sex, though, so, you know, if that bothers you, don't read it. And uh, they have, like, a house that they want to build, and they're constantly talking about moving away together, and, y you know, that sort of thing. Anyways, uh, before they can be together again, uh, he dies at the end, and I know that sounds like... A spoiler, but like it's in the tags. It says character death, so it's not hard to see coming. And then at the end, it's just you know, it's just sad. And the worst part is that it's actually pretty good. <laughs> like I really mean it. Like it's a cute romance. You feel the, the the whole like maybe they shouldn't be doing this, but at the same time, like it's what they want. But it just. And it is genuinely sad when Matt's gone, but, like, it's a fucking coffee commercial. So, that one is kind of short, but, I mean, the thing is, I just didn't, I didn't want to read through too much of those because, like, honestly, like, without the sex parts, there, there's just not that much in there. And most of them aren't even really that terribly written, so it's not like you can laugh at how bad the prose is or anything. And I just, um, I, I don't know, like, I, I feel like as soon as I say that this is the craziest fanfiction ever and nothing will ever top it, I feel like there's going to be something else that's going to come up very soon and will prove me wrong and I'll have to make more stuff on that, but I just, I just, I'm genuinely at a loss for words that people would be this big into the home for the holidays Folgers coffee commercial fandom. Like, they would actually write multi-chapter, multi-thousand word... I don't know, whatever. Just, um... It's Christmas 
time. This is coming out a couple days before Christmas, so uh, Merry Christmas. If you don't celebrate Christmas, I hope you have a wonderful day anyways. Thanks to my patrons, Apo Savalainen, Christopher Hawkins, Joseph Pendergraft, Melanie Austin, all the others whose names you see here. Um, I hope you all, ha like I said, I hope you all have a wonderful Christmas, wonderful whatever you do, and um, just, just don't fuck your sister. What are you doing, step bro?